Super Mario World was not just the fourth mainline entry in the extremely popular Super Mario Bros. franchise. It was the debut for the series on the Super Nintendo, and while it may have been one of the very first games developed for the system, it still remains today as one of the best. After the crash of Atari in the early 80s, Nintendo had almost single-handedly reinvigorated the video game industry in North America, and they had done such a good job that by the end of the decade, competitors had started to emerge. The Sega Genesis hit the market in 1988 and offered a true 16-bit experience closer to what players could find in the arcades, as well as a marketing campaign that attacked the weaker hardware in the 8-bit NES. Nintendo knew that they had to release a new system to stay competitive, but they also knew that if they waited, technology would improve and their system would get a technical edge over existing hardware. And as the market leader, introducing a new console would take away sales from their own NES. So Nintendo put all of their marketing muscle into promoting Super Mario Bros. 3 and got working on their new system in secret. With a retail price of about $200, which would be over $400 in today's dollars when adjusted for inflation, the Super Nintendo was not going to come cheap, and the executives at Nintendo knew consumers weren't going to buy it without an impressive game to showcase the power of the system. They needed the next Super Mario Brothers. The new game was produced by the legendary Shigeru Miyamoto, who handed off the role of director to his longtime co-developer, Takashi Tezuka. This was a big responsibility for Tezuka, but Miyamoto was not the hands-off kind of producer, and did a lot of directing from his producer role. Miyamoto wanted Mario to have a rideable dinosaur companion in Super Mario Bros. 3, but this would have required a ton of additional animations, and with everything the team had crammed into Mario 3, it would have been difficult to fit it all on the cartridge. Of course, there weren't the same restrictions with the power of the 16-bit Super Nintendo, so for Super Mario World, Yoshi was born. Yoshi is typically green, but also comes in special red, blue, and yellow varieties to match the color scheme of the Super Famicom. The exotic Yoshis have special abilities that are activated when you eat a Koopa shell, and the blue Yoshi, which gains the ability to fly, is particularly powerful. Yoshi won't be able to accompany Mario into every level, and there are fewer power-up transformations this time. Along with the Super Mushroom, Fire Flower, and Star Man items that have been standard since the first game, Super Mario World does add one new item, the Cape Feather. While a bit awkward at first, Mastering the cape will allow Mario to freely fly through the levels while whipping or dive-bombing any enemies in his way. Mario also gets a few new basic moves, like the ability to punt objects up into the air, and a powerful spin jump that he can use to smash enemies into dust. Hideki Kono was in charge of the interactive map, and this is perhaps the most brilliant part of the game. The map introduced in Super Mario Bros. 3 allowed players to plot their own course, but once a level was completed, you couldn't go back into it without using a continue, and aside from some limited things you could do with warp whistles, there was no way to go back to a completed area. In Super Mario World, not only can you revisit completed levels, it's encouraged. Many of the levels feature secret exits, and finding them opens up new areas on the map. As you walk around Super Mario World, you'll notice landmarks and levels that are just out of reach. The promise of unlocking these hidden areas is extremely enticing, and will make you want to play each level over and over again to uncover every single secret. Koji Kondo returned to compose the music, 
and created a spectacular soundtrack that was an excellent demonstration of the Super Nintendo's superior ability to synthesize music. With tracks both new and familiar, Kondo even added an additional drum track that plays along when riding Yoshi, an innovative musical effect that responds dynamically to the gameplay. Of course, Super Mario World was a big hit when it launched with the Super Famicom in Japan in November of 1990, and again when it debuted in North America in August of 1991. Two other games launched with the Super Nintendo in North America. Pilot Wings and F-Zero were innovative games that took full advantage of the system's Mode 7 technology, but the game people were really excited about was the next iteration of Mario. Even years later, Nintendo was still bundling the game with new Super Nintendo consoles, and it would be the best-selling game on the system with over 20 million copies sold. In modern times, the Super Mario Bros. brand is still alive and thriving, and they're still using that same red, blue, yellow, and green color scheme that was developed for Super Mario World over 30 years ago. Call it a masterpiece, a classic, or all of the above, Modern critics and players agree that Super Mario World is one of Mario's greatest adventures. When IGN released their list of the top 100 Super Nintendo games of all time, they ranked Super Mario World at number 5. If you'd like to play Super Mario World on a modern platform, it is one of the games included on the Super NES Mini or with the Switch's online service. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the Super NES is notorious for. Many of the exits are expertly hidden and can have you running in circles around the map. There are castles packed with traps and haunted houses with swarms of ghosts. Extra lives are abundant, but if you get hung up on one level, it won't be long before it's game over. But what if I told you the best way to complete every level and find all 96 exits? What if I told you about tons of secret tricks and glitches, including a way to get a silver Yoshi, an item that clears levels instantly, and so many ways to get unlimited 1-ups that I lost count? And what if I told you the best way to defeat every boss? Even Bowser the Koopa King himself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out you can beat video games.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. And please join our Patreon for access to an exclusive Discord community and a chance to vote on future episodes. Let's get started. All right, Super Mario World. Before we dive deep into the levels, I just want to give a quick five minute overview on what I consider to be the easiest way to beat the game. The first thing you'll want to do is head up the left side of the map and hit the yellow switch. This is totally optional, but it'll make your life a whole lot easier. This is going to make a bunch of yellow exclamation blocks appear in the levels, and that'll make finishing World 1 a lot easier. Finishing World 1 is the next thing that you need to do, and when you get to Donut Plains 1, make sure to grab a cape, and instead of crossing the goal line, run to the left and do a big jump up here, where you'll find a key that will unlock Donut Secret 1. If you bring a P-switch over near this question mark block, you'll be able to get a key out of it, 
and then you'll find another secret exit. But instead of going directly to the Donut Secret House, I do recommend that you finish Donut Secret the normal way, which will take you to the other Donut Ghost House. Just like doing the yellow switch, this part is also optional and you'll need to have a cape so you can get one back in Donut Plains 1 by simply killing this first enemy. And once you have the cape, pause the game and press select to exit the level. Head back up to the Donut Ghost House and you're just going to run to the right and then run back to the left and do a big jump holding down the jump button. If you had enough speed, you'll be able to float right up here to the top, and then you just want to run across this ledge, and at the bottom, you'll find a couple 1-ups, but they're not very important, because once you go through the door and cross this goal line, you're going to find the top secret area. Inside the top secret area, you'll be able to get whatever power-ups you need, you can find capes on the right side or flowers on the left side, and you'll find Yoshi in the middle. If you need 1-ups, you can come back here as many times as you need to collect a 1-up in the center. Now that you have a limitless supply of 1-ups and powers, head back to the Donut Secret House, and in here you want to carry this P-switch over near this door, but you'll find a vine above it, Climb the vine and you'll find a hidden door, which will lead to a boss, the Big Boo. The Big Boo himself is not actually that threatening, but the two smaller boos in the room are very dangerous, so you want to make sure to control them by looking at them, and whenever the Big Boo stops moving, get underneath him and punt one of the blocks up into his face. Three hits will clear the Big Boo, and then you'll open up the path to Star World. Star Road is this game's warp zone, but it can only take you to a few places. You need to find the key exits in the Star World levels or you won't be able to move on. In the first one, you want to head all the way over to the right, do a spin jump and just start breaking the blocks. It's okay if you abandon your Yoshi because we're going to find a better blue Yoshi in the next level. So just keep breaking the blocks on the right side and you're going to come to the area where the key is and you'll just be able to use the hidden exit and move on to the next Star World level. Star World 1 is pretty easy but Star World 2 is perhaps even easier. At the very beginning, you'll find a baby blue Yoshi, and you can either feed him the Star Man or feed him a bunch of fish, and he'll turn into an adult Yoshi. And then you just need to get to the end of this level. You can do that by keeping the Star Man going or just swimming up at the top of the screen. Either way will work. At the end, you'll see an exit pipe that leads to the goal, but you want to swim underneath that because we need to find the hidden exit to move on. Over here, you'll find a key, which you can grab with your blue Yoshi's tongue, and then just touch the keyhole to advance. We're going to encounter a Lakitu in Star World number 3, and we need to borrow his cloud. The first thing you want to do is hit that silver P switch, which is going to change all of the spinies into coins, and that's going to keep you safe. Dismount from Yoshi, pick up one of these blocks, and launch it at Lakitu when he's near that stair-like formation near the goal. Then get back on your Yoshi, climb up the stairs, and jump onto the cloud, and you'll be able to float with it over to the upper left side, where you'll find a hidden key, and then over on the right, you'll find the keyhole, which will lead us to Star World number 4. The blue Yoshi can fly if it has a Koopa shell in its mouth, so that will make this stage pretty easy. Just fly down here and launch a shell at this block. Make sure it's not a red shell, those turn into fireballs. And you'll find a key, which will open up the path that leads to this Star Road, and this is the one that will take you to Bowser's Castle. Inside the front door, I recommend taking door number two. Door number two is very easy, 
and since we haven't hit very many of the switches, I recommend door number 5. Inside a door number 5, wait for the spikes to come down, get as close as you can, and as soon as you see the bottom of the spike, start running to the right and don't look back. If you mistime it, you'll get clipped at the end, but you should still make it to the door. Turn on the lights and head to the right, and it only takes six hits from these Mecha Koopas to finish off Bowser and rescue the princess. And just like that, Mario's quest is over, and he even gets a kiss from the princess for his efforts. Of course, if you play the game that way, you miss all of the best parts. The real way to play Super Mario World is to try to find all 96 exits. So that's what we're going to do as we start a new game and make our way to Dinosaur Land. It seems that Princess Toadstool is missing again and we're already jumping to conclusions and blaming Bowser for taking her, but spoiler alert, he is the one that kidnapped her. We start out on a small optional level called Yoshi's House, and inside we see that Yoshi's not home, but he did leave us a message. Whenever we do find Yoshi, if we come back here, we'll get a different message, but for now, I recommend that we go to the left and visit Yoshi's Island number one. Yoshi's Island 1 is an optional level, but it leads to the Yellow Switch Palace, and the sooner we get there, the better. These enemies that look like Figment from Epcot Center are called Rexes, and you want to press the A button to stomp them with a spin jump, otherwise you'll have to hit them with two of your normal jumps, and after you hit them with one normal jump, they'll start moving quite fast. There's a hidden mushroom behind a bush that you can find by just running past, and then if you use your spin jumps above this pipe, you'll be able to drill down and find this hidden room. Inside, we'll find the third dinosaur coin, and if you find five dinosaur coins in a single level, you'll get a one-up, and if you would find any more dinosaur coins than that, each one of them would be worth an additional one-up. Most levels only have five dinosaur coins, and once you find them all, you won't be able to find the dinosaur coins again if you revisit the level. If you stomp on these Rexes, you may be able to get a 1-up, and if you're good, you may be able to get more than one. You can also slide down hills in this game, like in Super Mario Bros. 3, but you won't be doing it too often. Over here, you'll find a conspicuously placed shell. You want to punt that up into the air so that you can get this 1-up, and if you bounce off of that big bullet bill, you can go all the way up in the air and catch it on the cloud platforms above, or you can wait until it drops down and grab it in midair. This is the end of the stage, and make a mental note of where this is, because we're going to be doing a trick here in a few minutes. But this enemy at the end is called a Charging Chuck, and he's pretty dangerous because you have to jump on him multiple times to kill him. You can also use him as a jumping board to try to hit that goal line at a higher point, and the higher you hit that goal line, the more stars it's worth. There are no cape feathers in World 1, but once you get to World 2, you can come back here and fly up to the top for a 3-up moon. Here's a more difficult trick. As Fire Mario, ride Yoshi to the end of the level, but don't eat the piranha plant and don't go so far to the right that the Charging Chuck spawns in. We're going to try to dismount from Yoshi and spit a fireball at the same time, so when the Rex is right here, press X and A at the same time while holding down and right on the control pad, and if you time it right, Yoshi's tongue will touch the coin, but Mario will collect the coin first before he can swallow it, and you'll get a glitched item in your item box, and when you press select to use it, you'll find that that glitched item is this green orb that normally you would only be able to find in the sunken ship level. Assuming you can get up to the top of the screen to touch it, you can use this item to instantly clear any level. One thing that you should not do with it, however, is try to use it in the bonus room. 
You'll need Yoshi to get a boost up to where the orb is, but it will take you to an empty bonus game that never ends. And this will softlock the game, you'll have to reset. Getting the green orb is not easy, it takes very precise timing, and if you mess it up, it will crash the game. So it probably won't make the game easier for you, but it is a fun trick to try. If you hold down the X or Y button, you'll be able to pick up this P switch, and I recommend taking it to the top of this pipe, and then running across to the left. That will give you the most time to be able to collect the coins on the top row, and should give you a good opportunity to collect a lot on the bottom as well. Over here you'll find a large yellow switch, and whenever you jump on it, it will change all of the yellow dotted lines into solid yellow question mark blocks, and you'll also get a chance to save the game. Once you complete a Switch Palace, you will not be able to go back inside of it, so unless you run out of time and die in there, you will only get one shot at collecting those coins. So make it a good one. Once you've finished at the Switch Palace, head down here to Yoshi's Island 2, where we'll finally meet up with Yoshi for the first time. If you grab this shell and throw it to the right, you'll be able to hit all of those Koopas for a 1-up. And if you keep following it fast enough, you can hit even more Koopas for even more 1-ups. Just make sure you don't get hit by the ricocheting shell at the end. This speaker box provides some information about spin jumps, but the box we're really interested in is this one that contains Yoshi. Since it's the first time we've met with Yoshi, he has a little message for us. And although Yoshi just hatched out of an egg, he is not a baby. It seems that Bowser used some kind of Benjamin Button magic to reverse age Yoshi until he was an egg, and whenever Mario hits the question mark box, it releases him from his spell. While riding Yoshi, you can eat these red berries, and eventually he'll crap out a power-up for us. If you get hit while riding Yoshi, Yoshi does not immediately die and will just start to run away. If you can jump on him, you'll be able to remount Yoshi, and it'll be as if nothing ever happened. If you find another Yoshi egg while you already have a Yoshi, even if you're not currently riding him, you'll find a 1-up instead. And you can eat these Monty Mole enemies before they even pop out of the wall. One thing that Yoshi cannot do is climb a vine, so if there's vines to be climbed, you may need to press the A button to dismount. Over here we'll find our fifth and final dinosaur coin, so we'll get our one up. And then you'll see a few of these yellow exclamation point blocks, which would not be there if we hadn't visited the yellow switch palace. If you press down on top of this purple pipe, you'll enter a cave below, and there are a few question mark blocks flying up above. If you jump while riding Yoshi and dismount in midair, you can use Yoshi to get a little bit of a boost to your jump. You can also pick up the purple blocks and launch them up into the air to hit the question mark blocks. And while most of them contain coins, one of them does contain a 1-up. After exiting the cave below, eat the piranha plant and then knock down this purple P-switch. Whenever you hit the P-switch, you'll temporarily turn the coins into blocks and you can use those blocks as a platform to hit the top of the goal line. If you hit it at the perfect position at the top of its arc, you'll get 50 stars and 3 1-ups. If you're getting 40 or 30 stars, you're very close and you're probably only a few frames off. Before we go on, if you get a running start at the beginning of this level and do a spin jump in just the right place, you can actually kill that entire line of Koopa Troopas, and if you pause the game and press select, you can leave any level that you've already completed. If we come back to Yoshi's house, we'll get a different message. This message now tells us that it's possible to fill in the dotted line blocks by visiting the Switch Palaces. But we kind of knew that already. If you want to practice eating the fruits, you can do that here, but you won't get any significant rewards for doing so. Once you're done in Yoshi's house, we'll head back out. That of course is optional, but now we'll head on to Yoshi's Island number 3. 
At the beginning of this level, we see a speaker box that tells us a bit about dragon coins, which is another name for the dinosaur or Yoshi coins. I never really thought of Yoshi as being a dragon, but whenever he eats a red shell, he does breathe fire. If you hit the yellow switch, you'll find a lot of those yellow exclamation blocks in this area, and they'll provide a safety net for you if you miss some of your platforming jumps. Over here we'll find a Yoshi egg, so if you don't already have a Yoshi, you'll be able to find one here, otherwise you'll get a 1-up. Ride these floating gray platforms over to the right, and whenever you jump onto one of these wooden platforms, it will rotate around a central pivot point. Down here at the bottom, you'll find a yellow pipe which will lead you to this hidden cave, and if you hit the P switch and cross over the lava, you'll find your second dragon coin. Once you exit the pipe, you'll find the mid goal. If you ever cross the mid goal as small Mario, you'll be upgraded to Super Mario. Try to bop this Koopa Troopa from underneath, and if you eat a red Koopa shell as Yoshi, you'll be able to breathe fire whenever you press the Y button. Inside that question mark block, you'll be able to find a fire flower. And over here, if you've already been to the Yellow Switch Palace, you'll be able to easily cross over to the right. But if you haven't, and these yellow exclamation blocks are not there, you'll need to cross these stretch blocks. And when you're doing that, you want to always jump to the middle block, because that one is always solid. Here at the end of the level, we'll find this green star block. If you've collected at least 30 coins in this level, you'll get a 1-up. Otherwise, it'll only contain a coin. And here at the end, if you want to cross this goal line at the very top, I usually just jump and then dismount from Yoshi to get some extra height. It doesn't matter if you lose Yoshi here, you can easily get another one back in Yoshi's Island level 2. It's actually possible to get a cape in this level by using a difficult glitch. You need to drop a green shell near this question mark block, and try to have Yoshi pick up the shell at the exact same time as you collect the mushroom. Here's what it looks like in slow motion. If you do it perfectly, you'll see that Yoshi will extend his tongue a second time, and although he only hits air, it still seems like he has something in his mouth. Once you have that mouthful of air, you need to bring it to almost the end of the level and you're going to release it on this wooden platform. If you do it in just the right spot, you'll dismount Yoshi and suddenly Mario will have a cape. Most of the time you'll probably crash the game, but if you do it perfectly, it is possible to get a cape in World 1. It's obviously a lot easier to just get a cape in World 2 and then come back to World 1, and you'll need a cape to do this next trick. So you want to be Cape Mario, and you need to come down to this bonus pipe. Grab the P switch, get a running start, and do a big jump to get across the lava. Carry the P switch back to the left, and go down into the pipe again. Now there will be two P switches. You want to try to drop one on top of the other one so you can pick them both up at the same time, and you may think that they need to be exactly on top of each other, but they actually need to be slightly offset. I'll zoom in so you can see better what it looks like. So that's what two P switches picked up at the same time looks like. And once you have them both in hand, get a running start again, and do a big jump holding down the jump button so that you can get across the lava. Once you're on the other side, I like to head over here to the right so I can get a little bit of runway to get a big jump back to the left, and you want to make your way over to where you can find Yoshi. You want to launch both of those P switches up into the block with Yoshi, so hold up and release Y, and if you did it correctly, you'll get two Yoshis that pop out of the same block. Mount the Yoshi, drop down to the right and immediately dismount and hold to the left before you die, and you'll reappear back up on the top, but you'll be riding an invisible Yoshi. Not only is this Yoshi invisible, he's also invincible. 
so you will not be able to be damaged by enemies, although you can die by falling off the bottom of the screen. Unfortunately, whenever you get to the end, he will turn back into normal Yoshi, so you won't be able to keep invisible Yoshi for the rest of the game, you'll only be able to use him here in Yoshi's Island 3. So while maybe it's not the most practical trick, it's not that difficult to do. We also got enough stars to get the bonus room, and in the bonus rooms, if you just get a good rhythm going, you can usually make the same shape appear on every box. There's another way to do the bonus room, which I'll show you a bit later, but if you're just trying to get a few one-ups out of the deal, just get yourself in one position and try to keep jumping so that you hit a box every time. And that's going to bring us to Yoshi's Island 4. If you don't have a Yoshi, you should go back to Yoshi's Island 2, quickly grab the Yoshi from the box at the beginning, and then press start and select to exit. You will definitely want a Yoshi for this level, it will make it a whole lot easier. At the very beginning, you want to jump up into the air and then dismount from Yoshi so that you can get up to a higher platform that you can't see, and then just run to the right which will make a 1-up spawn. You'll have to wait at the bottom for a moment until the 1-up comes down there, but then you can get back on your Yoshi and continue to the right. As you head to the right, some big spikes will float across the water, but Yoshi can actually eat those. And if you go down into this purple pipe, you'll find an area with a bunch of these cactus enemies called Pokies, which first appeared in Super Mario Bros. 2. If you have a Yoshi, you'll be able to eat each one of these guys piece by piece, but if you don't, you'll have to get creative to be able to jump over them. Make your way over to the right, you'll find a question mark box here that has a bunch of coins in it, so keep hitting that until you don't want coins anymore or it stops dispensing them. Eat the last pokey and then make your way to the pipe on the right. As we emerge from that optional detour, we can head over to the left to collect another dinosaur coin and then you want to hit the P switch before you collect this star man so that you can use that line of coins as a platform to quickly get across the water. The more enemies you hit while you're invincible, the more points you'll be able to get, and eventually you'll start getting 1-ups. Pretty nice. Once you go through this pipe, we'll reach the goal line, and this speaker box will tell us a little bit about the 100 bonus star system, and you can also use it as a platform to reach a higher position on the goal line. We got the 30 this time, so we did hit it when it was close to the top. Remember, if you're getting 30, 40, or 50, you're doing a pretty good job. Here's a fun trick. If you have Yoshi eat a power-up that will transform Mario into a different form just as time expires, it'll look like you died, but instead you'll get powered up, and although the music will be turned off, you'll be able to continue playing with no time limit. And that brings us to our first castle. Yoshi takes one look at this place and he's like, nah dog, I ain't going in there. So we're gonna have to do this one solo. Once you get inside, we'll see a speaker box that tells us a little bit about fences. If you jump in the air and there's a fence behind Mario, just press up and you'll immediately grab on. While you're on the fence, you can still stomp the Koopa Troopas by coming down on their heads, or you can press Y or X to punch them from the other side. I think this P-switch is only here just so that we can get this Fire Flower, which would be pretty hard to collect otherwise. The other question mark blocks there only contain coins. While you're on the fence, you can keep bopping the Koopa Troopas for additional points and eventually you'll get a 1-up, but punching them through the fence doesn't count. So if you want to try to get a 1-up, don't touch the ground, and just keep killing the enemies by bopping them from above. But remember, punching, punching won't work. However, if you punch that square in the middle, you can go to the other side of the fence, but you'll see when you jump across and press up, you'll automatically go back to the front side keep that in mind. 
these green guys will stay in one area and just keep moving up and down, although if they get to the top of the fence, they'll climb over to the other side. And once you get over here, you'll be able to find the midpoint goal. And there's a little bit of advice on how to defeat the boss, but it's not time for a boss fight just yet. In this area, massive pillars come down to crush Mario. Stay on the left to avoid the first one, and crouch down in this area to avoid the second. You'll be able to get a power up from that floating question mark block, and then you want to get all the way to the right side of the screen to avoid that next pillar, wait for this stretch block to extend, and then run over to the right to get to the door. If you have fireballs, just launch a couple at Iggy when you get into the room, and then jump on him a couple times to knock him off the edge. If you don't have fireballs, you'll need to be a bit more conservative. Just wait until the right side dips down, and then jump on him twice. That's all you need to do to finish him off. Don't overthink it, or it will get more difficult. You definitely do not want to be bouncing him back and forth across the platform. And with that, we'll detonate the first castle, defeating the demented Iggy Koopa, and rescuing one of Yoshi's friends who is still trapped in an egg. And from there, we'll travel to Donut Land. Mmm, Donut Land. I'm not gonna lie. Since I've been working on this video, I have been craving donuts. Before we move on, if you'd like to replay any of the castle levels, you need to press L and R at the same time when you're standing on the castle on the map. I'm not sure why it's different from any other level, but if you were playing the original Japanese version, you would not be able to replay the castles at all. And that brings us to the first level of Donut Plains. If you're riding Yoshi and you jump on top of that Super Koopa, you'll crush him into dust and he will not drop the cape feather. So if you want to be able to get a cape from one of the Super Koopas that has the flashing cape on his back, you will need to dismount from Yoshi. Once you get the cape for the first time, you should practice using it a little bit. By pressing the Y or X button, you can do a spin attack, and you can use that spin attack when you're in this bonus room to hit the left side of each of these boxes, which will make them always produce a circle, and you'll be able to get a one-up every time. If you don't do it this way, you'll have a chance to get a missed block, and you won't always get the one-up. So whenever you see that room, if you have a cape, you can make sure that you always get a bunch of extra lives. Once you emerge from that bonus room, you may want to head to the left across the mid goal. And we don't actually want that mushroom right now. That would be a downgrade for us. In here, we'll be able to practice flying with the cape. You can just run up the side of this pipe. So just run towards it and keep running and you'll go up the side and you'll be able to build up a bunch of speed, which you can use to get your flight going. Once Mario has the cape extended in the air, you just need to keep tapping to the left to keep flying to the right. So tap the opposite direction that you want to go and just tap, 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 tap. Get a nice rhythm going and you'll be able to fly across very wide spaces. The cape is also great against the charge and chuck enemies. Normally you'd have to bounce on this guy's head a whole bunch of times, but a single cape attack can take him out. Over here you'll find a vine that leads up to the third dragon coin, and down here to the left we'll find a Yoshi. We may have abandoned Yoshi at the beginning of the level, but because we went into a pipe and that Yoshi is gone, we can find another one now. And Yoshi can even eat those lava lotus enemies, which I think you would only find underwater in the previous game, but you'll find them on land in this one. And that's going to bring us to the end of the level. You can see some conspicuous dotted line blocks, and we'll get back to that later, but for now we're just going to go through the normal goal. Watch out for the Lava Lotus and the Charge and Chuck at the end, and you can use those yellow exclamation blocks to reach the top of the goal line. And we got another 40 stars. 
So it's time for another bonus game. It's a little bit more difficult to get a good jumping rhythm in the bonus room when you're riding on a Yoshi, but it's still possible to do. Now the next time we get the bonus room, I'll show you the other strategy where you pause the game and you look for the symbol that you're trying to find. But if you're good at getting a good rhythm, you don't have to do any of that. Regardless of whether or not you got the bonus room, finishing Donut Plains 1 by crossing the goal line will take you over here to the left, which leads to Donut Plains number 2. Donut Plains 1 does have an alternate exit, but we'll get back to that later. Right now, we want to find the secret exit here in Donut Plains 2 so that we can unlock the green switch palace. And then those green dotted line blocks that we saw back in Donut Plains 1 will suddenly be filled in. The screen scrolls to the right in this level, so make sure not to get crushed by a wall on the left side. The screen scrolls pretty slowly here, so you should have plenty of time to get out of the way, but you do need to navigate the yellow section to the ground, which move up and down. Yoshi can eat the buzzy beetles that you encounter in this area, but unlike the Koopa Troopas, he won't be able to spit the shells back out, he just immediately swallows them. When you see this green dotted line box, make sure to go into the next green pipe. This will take you to the area where we'll find the key and the secret exit. If you have Yoshi, you'll be able to just eat the blue shell on the right and that'll take you up to the top. Otherwise, you can hit that vine. Up here, release the shell, pick up the key and touch the keyhole, and this will open the path to the green switch palace. The inside of the green switch palace is not nearly as exciting as the coin heaven that we found in the yellow one, but what you want to do is hit this switch whenever the Koopa Troopa below is in a good position, so that you can drop down, shoot the shell to the left, and it'll bounce off the wall and hit all the enemies as you run to the right. You should be able to get two extra lives if you do it properly. Once you've collected your extra lives, head through the pipe, and on the other side, you'll find the large green exclamation point, and whenever you jump on it, you'll activate the power of the green switch. The green switch is arguably the best one, because whenever you hit a green exclamation block, you'll find a feather inside. Once you're done, we're going to head back into Donut Plains 2, both Donut Plains 1 and 2 appear as a red dot on the map, and that means that there are two different exits. If a level appears as a yellow dot on the map, that means there's only one exit, and you'll be able to see that all of the levels in World 1 only have a single exit, so they're all yellow dots. Officially, there are 96 different exits in this game, but there are only 74 levels, so 22 of them have an additional exit. For an exit to count towards the 96, it needs to take you to a different place on the map, so if you clear a level and it doesn't take you somewhere different, then that exit probably didn't count. Most of the hidden exits take the form of the key with the keyhole, but not all of them. Some of them are just normal goal lines. And while none of the castles, fortresses, or switch palaces have additional exits, many of the ghost houses do. We've already found the secret exit here in Donut Plains 2, so we just need to find the normal one. In this narrow corridor, it looks like the ceiling is going to cave in on you, but it'll actually start going back up before it gets too dangerous. Once you get into this area where the cavern gets a bit wider, you can grab the dragon coin, but wait here for a while, because that yellow part of the floor will go all the way up to the ceiling and will crush you if you jump on it too early. 
You'll be safe over here in this lower section on the right side, and you can wait here for a good moment to jump and grab the fifth and final dragon coin. Once you have it, you can try to eat these spinies through the pipes so that they won't mess with you, and then head through the green pipe to the goal. Once again, if you want to reach the highest point on this goal line, you may need to jump off of your Yoshi. And we were able to get 40 bonus stars before heading on to the Donut Ghost House. This is the game's first ghost house, and although we don't have a Yoshi with us right now, he would not want to come in here anyways. You do want to make sure that you come in here with a cape. You'll need it to be able to get to the secret exit. And the speaker says, can you find the exit? Um, yeah, it's right over here. So head to the right, then run back to the left and do a big jump to the top using your cape. And then just run across this platform over to the right side. When you get to the bottom, you'll be able to find a one-up in each one of these boxes. But watch out for the swarms of ghosts that attack. Once you go through the door, you'll find the hidden exit. And this will lead us to the top secret area. The top secret area is a spot on the map that you'll want to unlock as soon as possible because it will allow you to get whatever items you need at any time. On the left side you'll find fire flowers, on the right side you'll find feathers, and in the middle you'll find Yoshi. If you're already riding on a Yoshi, instead you'll find a 1-up, and you can just keep coming back into here as many times as you need to collect that 1-up over and over again. Once you have access to this area, you can always come back here, so you'll have no excuse for running out of lives or not having the power-ups that you need. Ghost houses are not marked with a red or yellow dot on the map, so you just have to kind of know which ones have multiple exits. We may have already found the secret exit here in the Donut Ghost House, but this place is a maze, and finding the normal exit may actually be more difficult. Head through the doors until you find this P switch, and then whenever you hit it, you'll see that a hidden door has appeared, and that door is only there while the P switch is active. Inside, you'll find this control coin block. You can change which direction the coin is moving with the control pad, and it works kind of like the snake game that you'd play on an old cell phone, in that if it runs into the wall or bumps into the other coins, it'll stop. So try to make the control coin produce as many coins as you can, and whenever you're done in here, head out through the door. That was just a bonus room, and it's not the way that we need to go. Instead, in the room with the P switch, you need to head over here through this door. That'll take you down to the bottom of this room, where you can make a vine grow, and whenever you climb up the vine, you'll find a hidden door at the top. That's how you get to the normal exit. So yeah, I'd say that's a good bit more difficult to find than that first one. And this will create a bridge to Donut Plains 3. If you ever just need to save your game, you can always go back to the Donut Ghost House and take the easy exit that leads to the top secret area. Before we head on to Donut Plains 3, we never did the secret exit in Donut Plains 1, so we'll go back and do that now. If you get a good running start, you can fly through most of this level with your cape. And now would be a great time to practice cape flight. Even if you're not that comfortable with the cape, you just want to make your way close to the end of this level. And because we've hit the green switch, even if we don't have a cape at all, it'll still be very easy to get to the secret exit. As we touch down here and head to the right, we're going to see a big line of green exclamation blocks where some dotted lines used to be. If we run up to the top of them, we'll find a key in a keyhole, and that will take us to Donut Secret number one. 
Donut Secret 1 is the game's first underwater level, and whenever you get close to those sleeping Rip Van Fish enemies, they'll wake up and start swimming towards you. You can attack any of the fish enemies in here with the cape, and over here you'll also find a fire flower, which will give you better range when you're underwater. Mario can't fly while he's underwater, so you won't get as much use out of the cape down here. If you head up in this pipe, we'll find a new item, the balloon. If you grab the balloon, Mario will inflate and he'll be able to float for a short time. After collecting the balloon, quickly make your way up the left side, where you'll be able to find a second balloon to extend your time. Then continue working your way to the top, where you'll be able to find two dragon coins and a one-up. Once you start running out of air, head over to the right, and as you drop down the right side, you'll find a platform that has a fire flower on it. Pick that up on your way out, and then head down into the pipe. You may want to bring a shell with you, so that you can do a one-up trick, and there's a couple places where you can do it. The best place, in my opinion, is right down here. You need to kind of carefully jump on the shell, just keep pressing the A button to float up into the air, and lightly tap the shell. As long as you don't touch the ground and the shell doesn't hit you, eventually you'll be able to keep hitting it for one-ups. It's a little bit tricky to do this and you can get hit by the shell, but once you have it figured out, you can easily rack up a ton of lives right here. Once you have enough lives, start making your way to the right, Roast the enemies in front of you with your fire flower, and if you need another one, you can find it in a question mark block nearby. Over here we'll find our fifth dragon coin, but that's not the last one in this level. We'll be able to find two more if we look hard enough, and each one will be worth an additional life. So here's the sixth dragon coin up here, and we're starting to run out of time, but we're almost to the end anyways. We'll drop off our P-switch, but we're not going to hit it just yet. If you head up here above this box, you can find a seventh dragon coin for another extra life. Then we'll hit our P-switch. You'll be able to go through this line of blocks that is turned into coins. Hit that question mark block, which will turn into a key. And then we can go through the keyhole to open the secret exit. We need to go through that secret exit to open up new areas of the map, but we should also finish Donut Secret the normal way so that we can get credit for both exits. If you're small Mario, you can do a different one-up trick, and you'll need to do it right over here where there was once a dragon coin. It's been replaced by this block, so you need to get that block out of the way. And then, if you're small Mario and you drop a shell right here, you can just bounce on top of it and hold up, and you'll just start getting 1-ups. This is a little bit easier than getting the 1-ups in the other spot in this level, but you have to be small Mario to do it. So, doing this trick, you can easily get a ton of extra lives, and when you're done with that, you can make your way to the right. If you're holding an object, you can quickly swim under the area where that key was, which looks impossible, but it's something you can do. And if you cross the goal line while holding a P-switch, it'll turn into a power-up. Which power-up it turns into depends on Mario's current form and what power-up he has in reserve. And you can see as small Mario with nothing in reserve, it would turn into a mushroom. The normal exit from Donut Secret 1 leads up to the Donut Ghost House, so that's an alternate path that leads up here. Before we move on, we can stop at the top secret area and stock up on items, and then we're going to head down to the Donut Secret House. Uh, Yoshi, would you come in here for a Scooby Snack? Maybe two Scooby Snacks? No? Alright. Well, I guess we're going in here alone. 
Watch out for that circle of ghosts and over here you'll encounter the Big Boo. You can use this springboard to jump over him, but did you know you can actually kill this guy by sliding down the stairs? Just hold down on some stairs when the Big Boo is coming towards you and you'll be able to take him out. You'd be very surprised at what enemies you can kill with the slide. In this room, make your way to the left and jump through the large space in the circle of ghosts. You can collect some coins in this question mark block while you wait. Remember that the single ghosts will only chase you when your back is turned, so you can turn to face them to make them stop still. This speaker box says that there are five entrances to Star World and Dinosaur Land, and we'll need to find all of them to be able to get all 96 exits. Before we get out of here though, we can head through this door, where we'll find a control coin room, and this is essentially a bonus room. You do not have to come in here. So follow the coin around, make it go where you wanna go, and try to corral all the ghosts in the same area so that you can just turn and look at them and make them stop moving. And whenever you're done, collect as many coins as you can, and then exit the door on the right side. That will bring us back to this room where the P-Switch was, and there are two exits to this ghost house. The first one is right here. You need to hit the P-Switch and go through the door that appears, and you'll find the goal line right outside. This is technically the normal exit to the Donut Secret House, and this will lead us to a pipe that takes you to Donut Secret number two. But let's do the other exit to the Donut Secret House before we go in there. The secret exit in here is right near the normal one, and something you can do with a cape if you're good at the dive bomb maneuver you can actually use it to go through the ghost enemies. You can also get a running start and just jump up over the big boo so you won't even have to use the springboard. And in this room you're just going to head over to the left where we're going to get the P-switch again, but instead of going into the door that's surrounded by the coins, we're going to use the P-switch to create a row of invisible question mark blocks and we'll use those to find a vine up above, which we can climb to this ledge, and this is where we'll find a hidden door, which will only be there while the P-switch is active. In this room, we're going to fight the Big Boo for the first time, and the Big Boo is not very difficult. The boss himself is not particularly dangerous, you just wanna watch out for the small ghosts, so try to keep them on the same side, wait for the boss to stop moving, get underneath it, and then hold up as you launch a block up into its face. It only takes three hits to defeat it. Defeating the Big Boo will open up the path to Star Road, and that will give us access to Star World. Even if you don't plan on using Star World to skip ahead to the end of the game, you should still finish some of the levels here, because this will give us access to the exotic red, blue, and yellow Yoshis. Now, you may not know this, but you can actually crush those blocks while you're riding on Yoshi by doing a spin jump, which will dismount you from Yoshi and then landing on his back. That will give Yoshi the energy to smash through these blocks. And when you get down here on the right side, we'll find the key, and remember, you need to use the key in Star World to be able to advance. However, you notice that each one of these levels is a red dot, so we do need to find the normal exit to be able to get all 96 exits. If you want to get all of the dragon coins here in Star World 1, the first one is on the far right side, but the second one is over here on the left. You can also find a cape feather over here, and if you head over to the right, you can find a fire flower if you're interested. The cape is a lot better in this level because you can use it to move to the left and right through the blocks, and you won't be able to do that as Fire Mario. If you head over here to the right, you can find a 1-up, 
you can just bop through those blocks until it comes down. And then you'll find two Starman items on this level. So you can keep your Starman going for quite some time, and you may be able to rack up a decent number of 1-ups by hitting the Koopa Troopas at the bottom. There's even a big line of them right here. So drill down and get a ton of extra lives with your invincibility. Now dropping through that line of enemies made us miss the last two dragon coins, but we can use our cape to whip through to the left and collect them. This is a little bit trickier than it looks. You need to be careful that you don't suddenly just slide all the way down to the bottom. That can happen sometimes. And if we head down this way, we'll find yet another Starman. And if you didn't bring a Yoshi with you when you started Star World 1, you'll find a red baby Yoshi down here, which we can feed a bunch of Koopa Troopas, and eventually he'll grow up into an adult red Yoshi. Red Yoshi is the same as the green Yoshi with one small difference. Anytime he eats a Koopa shell of any color, when he spits it out, it will be fireballs. As far as the three exotic Yoshis go, I'd say that the red one is the least useful, but a red Yoshi is definitely better than no Yoshi. This green pipe in the lower right corner will take you to the normal exit, and you'll notice when we get back to the map that this just takes you backwards and it doesn't open up any new areas on the map. Yet it does count towards the 96 exits. If you're trying to get them all, you need to be careful. Star World is a place where you can easily miss one. Star World 2 is one of the top five easiest levels in the game. You'd be almost as likely to die in the top secret area or Yoshi's house. All you need to do to get through this one is to stay at the top of the screen. Just swim up off the screen and then keep paddling until you get to the end. Don't worry about any of the enemies, they won't get you up here. Do what Dory told us and just keep swimming. When you get to the end, you're going to see a pipe that leads to the goal. You can go through that pipe if you want to do the standard exit, but we'll do the secret exit first, which will involve us swimming underneath the pipe and heading to the right. So there's a conspicuous overhang here. Just keep swimming over here. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And when you get to the end, you'll find the key, pick it up and insert it into the keyhole, and we'll be able to proceed to Star World 3, but we should go back and do Star World 2 for a second time first. So obviously you noticed the Starman at the beginning of the level. If you grab that and then pick up the Baby Yoshi, the Baby Yoshi will make you swim faster, and it'll allow you to get to this question mark block while you still have Starman active. If you can hit that question mark block before your invincibility completely wears off, another Starman will spawn, otherwise it'll just be a coin. Grab that second Starman, and with your extended invincibility, you should be able to take out a lot of enemies and remain invincible till the end of the level. If you do it just right, you may even be able to get a few 1-ups out of the deal. Once you get to the goal line, if you want to hit the top of it, just dismount from your Yoshi. The best thing about having Star World 2 finished is now we have access to a blue Yoshi whenever we want it. So if you want a blue Yoshi, just pop into Star World 2, wait for the baby Yoshi to eat the Starman, and he'll instantly grow into an adult. Then you can just mount Yoshi, start select, and bam, we have a blue Yoshi ready to go. Let's take a look at where some of these other star roads go to. This one takes us to the Twin Bridges area, and this one over here will take us to Vanilla Dome. However, you can see that we can't go anywhere, so unless you want to go to the final level, Star Road is not exactly a warp zone, it's more of a convenient shortcut that connects the map together. Now that we've unlocked enough of Star World that we can get any of the three exotic Yoshi types, let's head back to the Donut Plains and check out Donut Secret number two. At the very beginning, you can find this control coin block. 
you just want to circle it around so that you can collect a bunch of coins. Of course, we already have 99 lives and we can't get any more than that, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to try. It's not super obvious just from looking at it, but the ground here is very slick like ice, so be careful when you're running around and jumping in this area. There's a springboard at the bottom and a vine that you can use to climb up to the top, but if you have a blue Yoshi, you can easily get up there without the vine. This block contains a star man, and you want to let it go to the right just a bit before you grab it, because if you run with this star man fast enough, you'll be able to get a second one from a question mark block about halfway through the level. The box that contains the second star man is over here, and you'll still get it even if your invincibility is just wearing off, but if it's completely gone, you'll only find a coin. And you should be able to get a smorgasbord of 1-ups by hitting all of those Koopa Troopas at the end. Now before we go through the goal line, over here on the left is a green pipe that we can go into, so let's check that out very quickly. This part is totally optional, and you won't miss any dragon coins for skipping it. It's just a bunch of normal coins, but you will get an opportunity to mess around with the balloon item again, which is kind of rare in this game. So just float along, collecting as many coins as you can, and staying above the piranha plants. But don't waste time, because you will run out of balloon power in a short time. When you get to the end, you can go through the pipe, and that will take you back out near the block where the second star man was, but since we're not invincible right now, it only contained a coin. And then we'll head over here, where there's that big line of Koopa Paratroopas. You won't get as many extra lives as we did when we had built up a star man, but you can get a single one up for hopping on all of them. And with that, we'll cross the goal line, but before we go, if you have Yoshi eat the control coin, then the control coin music will not stop, and it'll continue until something would make the music change, like if you get a star man, or go inside of a pipe, or hit the goal line. So if you'd like to listen to this delightful tune for the entire level, feel free to have Yoshi eat that coin. Not a very useful trick, but one that's very easy to perform. Finishing Donut Secret 2 takes us to this pipe, and that leads back to Donut Plains 3, and I guess all the paths are converging here, so that's where we're going to go next. If you've hit the green switch, you'll be able to grab a feather at the beginning, and there are a lot of platforms to jump on in this area, so you need to be ready for that. Having a cape would help, and if you're struggling with this level, you may want to bring a blue Yoshi here. If you use a spin jump to drill down to the bottom here, you can release a vine, and up at the top you'll be able to find a bunch of coins as well as the second dragon coin. You can also use these coin platforms as a runway if you want to take off and try to fly through the rest of the level, but you'll miss out on a lot of the goodies if you do that. This speaker box tells us about pressing the L or R button to scroll the screen forward, and that's a good idea to do here. Press R to slide the screen forward, and make sure that you're hitting those switches so that the platform continues along the rope. Over here, you want to watch out for that fuzzy as you jump onto the platform, and you can find a feather in the middle of that rotating platform. Take the top platform here, it will jump between the ropes, but if you do fall off, there are some platforms below that might catch you. If you don't make it to the pipe, you can actually jump from the rotating platforms on the right and still make it over there if you have a cape. Inside, you'll find one of those bonus rooms, and remember, if you use the cape to hit each one of the boxes from the left side, you'll always get the circle. Make sure that you always start on the left. If you start on the right, you may accidentally hit one of the boxes from the right side, and then you could mess it up. And once you've collected all the 1-ups, head back out through the pipe, and that will take you over here, but you'll need to head back to the left if you want to collect the fifth dragon coin. Watch out for the black fuzzy as you jump to this platform, and if you've collected enough coins in this level, you'll find a 1-up in this green star block. 
You can also use it as a platform to reach the top of the goal line, and we did quite a good job this time getting the full 50 bonus stars. Donut Plains 3 only has a single exit, so things are getting a bit more straightforward as this world wraps up. As soon as you get into Donut Plains 4, you need to run to the right so that you can hit that shell before the Koopa gets inside of it. If he gets in there, the shell will turn flashing and it will be very dangerous. Heading down this pipe, we can find a bonus area, but there's not really anything to find in here, so feel free to skip this one if you want. There's a Hammer Brother riding a floating platform here. Wait near this red fruit and try to bop him from below when he hits his rightmost point. Then you can run up the wall, and if you have a cape, you'll be able to float up to this area, where if you do this weird counterclockwise jump around that small gray block, you can make a one-up spawn. You may need to try it a couple times, and if you throw this shell, you can catch a one-up by hitting all of those enemies. Nice. Drill down through this block if you need a power-up, but it's just a fire flower, and we probably would prefer the cape here. Still, it's nice to have a fire flower in reserve in case we would want it at another time. Head down this pipe to be able to find the last dragon coin, and you can use those Koopa Paratroopas as a bridge to get across to the pipe. Once you come out, you'll find the midpoint goal, and over here, we'll find Yoshi. Huh, nice to see you again, friend. Yoshi can eat these Goomba enemies through the wall here, and you'll want to do that to clear the way as you move ahead. And that brings us to this roulette block item. You want to release the item from the block when you see the cape feather, and then catch it when it turns into a star man. That'll give you a nice invincibility for the rest of the level, and you should be able to get a bunch of one-ups by running through the enemies. Use that Hammer Brothers platform to jump to the top of the goal line, and we've cleared yet another level here in the Donut Plains. That brings us to Morton's Castle, and as usual, we're going to have to do this one without Yoshi. See you soon, buddy. This one's for all the donuts. When you get inside, if you have a cape, there are two ways that you can go. Normally, you'd go underneath these small thwomps, which are called thwimps, and head up the stairs to the right. But you'll notice if you head back to the left that the leftmost thwimp has despawned, and now you have enough room to make some runway, and that will lead you up to this bonus room. Did you know that if you exit through the same pipe that you went into, you can just skip the bonus room, and it's as if you went all the way to the top? That's something that you may want to consider if you already have 99 lives. In this area, we need to navigate through these moving blocks as we climb to the top, and you'll find a power-up if you need it in the center of those three question mark blocks. Over here, if you're good, you can just jump across, but if you're a little bit more cautious, you can just wait for a bridge to appear. So you can just patiently wait there, and a bridge will pop up, and when you get up to this level, if you have the cape, you can just whip through that dry bones enemy, and he won't keep regenerating like he does if you stomp on him. Up here, you just need to wait for a moment for the blocks to come up on the left side, and you can use those to go up through, where you'll find a vine, and you can actually do a one-up trick right here. If you just keep waiting for that dry bones enemy to respawn and position Mario in the right spot, he'll just keep popping right back up into Mario's feet, and he'll be killed again and again. This never counts as touching the ground, so you'll get more and more points each time, and eventually you'll start getting one-ups. As far as one-up tricks go, this one is pretty slow, and you'll only get about 40 extra lives before the time runs out. So if you need some extra lives, this is an easy way to do it, but for now we're just going to climb up the vine and continue onwards. There's another 1-up mushroom at the top, so if you needed more extra lives after all of that, there's yet another one there, and we're not done. There's another 1-up mushroom over here on the right side. 
So I'm not sure what the Koopa engineers were thinking when they designed this place, just packing it full of extra lives. On some level, I think the bad guys want Mario to get through. As we near the top, we'll wait over here on the right side for an opening to appear in the ceiling, and then jump up through. We have the green switch so it's easy to cross over to the left here, and then a large block will jut out of the left wall that will help us get up to the top. If you have a fire flower, activate it now, because the easiest way to defeat Morton is to hit him with two fireballs and then stomp on his head. One, two, stomp, and he is gone. So if you have a fire flower, you can defeat that boss very easily. If you don't have a fire flower, and maybe you came here without a cape, this is what the other path looks like. By using a cape and flying up to the bonus room, you can skip this entire section of the castle, but if you wanted to see what it looks like, that will take you out here to the climb area. So let's take a look at the boss without the fire flower. He's in this confined room, and you want to try to hit him when he's on the right side at least twice. It's possible to get him three times before he ever gets onto the wall, but once he turns sideways you won't be able to hit him, so you want to bring him over to the right and hit him right after he lands. You want to jump before the boss lands on the ground because he will shake the ground and stun you for a moment if you're touching the ground when he lands. So keep that all in mind, and he's not actually that difficult to beat. This time we're going to karate slam the castle, and now Morton Koopa Jr. is just a memory. I like how the egg has a speech bubble that says thank you. What a very polite egg. You're quite welcome, my egg friend. With the castle crushed, the door opens to Vanilla Dome. This is the largest world in the game. Let's jump in to Vanilla Dome number one. Vanilla Dome one is an underground area, so you may expect the fire flower to be better than the cape here but you're going to want your cape active because of this next section with these yellow rotating blocks. If you jump up into the area above to collect some of the goodies and you have a cape, well you can use your cape spins to push through the rotating blocks. If you don't have a cape though, anytime you go up into that area, you'll need to go out through the top and back to the left. So you'll want to stay in the bottom if you don't have a cape. If you need one though, you can find one right here in the upper tier of blocks on the right side. Using your cape you can push through or just stay along the bottom and you can find a one up hidden in the block on the left side. Over here we'll eat a few buzzy beetles and you'll notice that there are red dotted line blocks here which hint that the red switch palace might be nearby. We'll come back to this area after we hit the red switch, but for now we'll go through this pipe, and you want to catch this star man and then jump onto this large yellow platform, which will immediately start sinking into the lava as soon as you touch it. So make sure you run quickly across it, and do a big jump at the end when it's almost hitting the lava. That brings us to the mid-level checkpoint, and when we jump up here to the right, you're going to find a dragon coin that the developers clearly only wanted you to be able to get if you're small Mario, but it is possible to get it in a larger form. You can wedge yourself into this small space, pick up and throw the block that's in your way, and once you have it, it's actually pretty easy to get out. Collecting all of the dragon coins is not super important or anything, but if you are trying to get them all, that's one way to get that one. Make your way over here to the right. You'll want to try to eat some of these enemies that are in your way, and if you eat this red Koopa, you can use it to spit fire. But remember, fire does not work on these buzzy beetle enemies. Those guys have been fireproof since day one, and just because the fire is coming out of Yoshi's mouth doesn't change anything. Head down here to collect the final dragon coin, 
And then up here, we can eat this Koopa shell to gain some wings. Whenever you have a blue shell in your mouth, it doesn't matter which color Yoshi you are, you'll be able to fly. And you can use that to cross the top of the goal line. It's possible to access a secret bonus stage in this level. Bring Yoshi to this area, and you're going to kick a shell upwards in this exact spot without collecting the dragon coin, and if you did it correctly, you'll make another rotating block spawn. Whenever it stops rotating, collect the dragon coin, and your new block will turn invisible, and if you kick a shell upwards into the side of that block, you can make a hidden wings appear. When you collect those wings, you'll be taken to this bonus stage, which you should not be able to access in this level. Once you drop out of the bottom of this bonus stage, you will clear Vanilla Dome 1 through the normal exit. So that's another way that you can finish this level. It's difficult to do, but it's a pretty neat trick. Vanilla Dome 1 does have one of those secret key exits, so we'll need to go back there later, but first we're going to head to Vanilla Dome 2. Vanilla Dome 2 is a cave that has a lot of swimming areas, and if you have Yoshi you'll be able to eat some of the fish at the beginning, but he won't be able to follow you up this vine, so you'll probably have to abandon him. Make your way up the vine and head over to the right, You'll notice there's an open area below us right now, and we're going to need to hit a P switch to be able to get in there. Once we hit that P switch, we'll be able to find a key to open up this level's secret exit. Getting to the P switch can be tricky, and if you need a feather, you'll find it in this row of question mark blocks. Over here you'll find a fire flower, so if you don't actually want the fire flower, you may want to consider not hitting that one. Here's the P switch we were looking for, but make sure you clear that row of coins before you hit it, otherwise it will turn into a wall that you won't be able to pass through. Once the P switch is active, drop through the coins and you'll find the key, then carefully swim the key around these cheap cheap enemies, and that will bring you to the keyhole. There's another way to get to the key if you have Yoshi. You can actually pass through the wall. So dismount from Yoshi, swim a little bit over to the right, and try to catch him right on his head as he gets close to the wall. You may need to dismount and remount him one more time. Swim over here, but there's no water in the wall, so you need to extend your tongue drift down to the right and dismount Yoshi at just the last second to get over here into the water where you'll be able to find the key. It's probably more trouble than it's worth, but that is a fun shortcut. Here in the red switch palace, all you want to do is hit the P switch and then get out of the way. The coins will turn into platforms so you can get up above the action and you just want to lead the flashing shell around so that it clears all of the enemies and gives you a bunch of extra lives. Once the P switch wears off, you can collect the remaining coins, and then head over here where you'll find the large red exclamation block, and you'll be able to turn those red dotted lines into red exclamation blocks. These red exclamation blocks will help you with your platforming, but unlike the green and the yellow exclamation blocks, you will not find any power-ups inside of them. Now that we've hit the red switch, let's go back to Vanilla Dome 1 and do the secret exit. You probably recall that there were some dotted line blocks near the beginning of this level, and that's where we need to go. Make your way to the right, clearing out any enemies that are in your way, and you may spawn a mushroom down here at the bottom, which you may want to avoid if you have a better item in your reserve box. Climb up on the red platforms and you'll find a block that spawns a vine, and when you climb to the top of the vine, you'll find the key and the keyhole that leads to Vanilla Secret 1. Vanilla Secret 1 is the first of three Vanilla Secret levels, and this one has two exits for us to find. But we're not looking for a key this time. We're going to find two totally normal goal lines that will lead to two different places. 
Over on the left side, you'll be able to find a feather, and then you can use these green springy platforms to launch you up above. Using your cape spins will allow you to get a lot of coins out of those multiple coin blocks, so that's something that you may want to try. And over here, you'll be able to spawn a vine, which will allow you to climb up to the next area, but you may want to use a Koopa shell to clear out the enemy flying above before you start your ascent. Over here you'll find another vine, and that will bring you up to this spot where you can find another power-up, and this one is a feather, which will be very useful around here. You'll see a couple blue dotted line blocks in this area, but we're not going to be hitting the blue switch anytime soon, so we'll need to find the second exit in this level without them. Carefully jump through the line of Koopa Paratroopas using the springboard, and if you want to find all of the dragon coins in this area, bring a springboard over to this side, and then launch off of it to find the final two. From here, we just want to jump on top of this green pipe, use a couple of these springboards, and this sign says that we're almost to the goal, and when we emerge from this pipe, we'll see a charging chuck punting a football, but you can easily just go underneath him and then use the platform that he was standing on to get to the top of the goal line. That goal is considered the normal exit for Vanilla Secret 1, and it will open up a path that leads to a pipe, and that pipe will take you on to Vanilla Secret 2, but before we get to that, let's go back into Vanilla Secret 1 and find the alternate exit. You're going to want to have a cape for this, but if you don't have one already, you can easily find one in this very level. Climb up the vines on the right side, and when you get up to this next spot, you're going to use this platform as a runway, run across to the left and do a big jump up to this pipe, and this will lead to the second goal. Just like the first goal, there's a charging chuck guarding the way, so get rid of him, and then jump to the top of the goal line, or at least give it a try. This alternate exit to Vanilla Secret 1 is going to take us to Star Road. So we can obviously see that there's a connection to Star Road here, and that will take us back to this one that we have seen before. So we'll head back down here and then go up into this pipe that will lead us up on top of Vanilla Dome, where we'll find two secret levels and a fortress. At the beginning of Vanilla Secret 2, if you take out the enemies and then get a running start, you can fly up into a cloud area, where you'll find some coins and the first dragon coin of the level. Once you're done, you'll want to drift back down to the bottom where you'll find a Yoshi, and Yoshi will have a lot of enemies to feed on in this area. If you get hit, this area is also very flat, so you just want to try to catch back up with Yoshi, and you should be fairly safe. There are so many Koopa Paratroopas around here, that it's not that difficult to jump from one to another, and start racking up a bunch of points, and maybe even some one-ups. Inside that power-up box, you'll find a fire flower, but you would prefer to have a cape in this area. Eat any piranha plants that are in your way, and then cross the mid-level gate. There's a Lakitu living in a pipe here, but Yoshi can simply eat him, and you'll find a feather item in the note blocks above. Yoshi can also eat the bob-bombs that are parachuting down, and they won't give him indigestion. This box just contains some coins, so you can skip it if you're not interested, and over here we'll find a silver P-switch, which whenever you hit it, it's going to turn all the enemies into coins. If you collect enough of these coins, you'll be able to get a bunch of extra lives, so you want to grab all of those spinies, and then start running back to the left to see how many other enemies you can collect. If you can get back to the area where all the Koopa Troopas were, you can get even more extra lives, but you should be able to get a decent number just near the spinies. Before we leave Vanilla Secret 2, there is a hidden area in a pipe for us to check out, and it's this pipe right here. Down inside we'll find a P-switch, and then we can quickly head back to the left, collecting whatever coins that we can, but don't be standing on these blocks whenever they turn back into coins, 
or you'll fall into the lava. We'll get launched out of the pipe and that will take us near the goal line. If you hold the R button, you can get a better view of it, and then just drift over to the top to try to catch it for 50 bonus stars. Before we move on to the next level, let's talk about that other strategy for beating the bonus game. If you pause while you're in here, you can sort of see where the different shapes are, and so you can see we're right under the mushroom. If you're underneath the shape that you're looking for when you pause the game, you can just start hitting that spot, and you should be able to turn all of the blocks into the same shape. So if you're looking for a mushroom, keep pausing until you find it, and then just keep hitting that same area, and if you do it correctly, you'll be able to make a perfect bonus room. Vanilla Secret 3 is another easy one. At first it looks kind of hectic, but there are very few enemies in here that can actually damage you. The dolphins are totally friendly. You can use them as platforms, you can bump into them, they won't damage you. So use them to collect the dragon coins and the other goodies up above. You'd also rather stay out of the water if you can avoid it. There is an occasional porcupo enemy that you may see down there. If you have Yoshi, you can eat that enemy. And other than falling off the bottom of the screen or running out of time, that's the only thing that can kill you in here. We can ride the dolphins up to the mid-level checkpoint here, but it's probably not necessary. Just keep making your way to the right, and over here we can just ride a dolphin to the end as we bounce through these arrows made out of coins. So we'll just hold our position, and eventually you'll end up on dry land, where you can collect the fourth and next to last dragon coin because the last one is right before the goal line. And we got 50 bonus stars again, not bad. And that brings us to the vanilla fortress. There are four fortresses in the game and this is the first one that we've encountered. Yoshi won't be able to follow us inside because a fortress is essentially just another castle level. This fortress in particular is almost entirely underwater. Stay up in this corner until that spiky ball gets out of the way, and then swim across to the right. If you're small Mario, you can take the lower path here, and that will skip you ahead to the next section, but I wouldn't exactly call it a shortcut. Instead, I'd probably just stay up here, swim over to the right where you'll find a power-up, and when you get to this area, hold the R button to advance the screen, and then those spikes will fall way ahead of Mario, and you won't have to worry about them. Use your cape attack to take out the small enemies and the dry bones, and if they throw a bone at you, just duck underneath it. Once you get to this pipe, head on down inside, and we'll be able to make our way to the next part of the fortress. This pipe is marked letter B on the map. If you took the pipe that could only be accessed by small Mario, that one is labeled letter A. If you'd like to get a bunch of extra lives, you can do it here by continuously killing this dry bones enemy. Just make sure that your feet don't touch the ground, and you can just keep bopping him every time he regenerates. Like most 1-up tricks that involve the dry bones enemies, this one is not particularly efficient, but it is fairly easy to do. Once you're satisfied with the number of 1-ups you have, make your way to the right, and you want to taunt this thwomp in front of us so that it drops, and then you can swim up above it. Don't try to use your cape attack on those bonefish, you just need to swim around them, but it will work on many of the other enemies in this dungeon. When you get to the big red door, it'll be time to fight the boss, Reznor. You need to hit each one of these Triceratops enemies from underneath, and once you hit the second one, the bridge below will start breaking, so you want to wait to hit that second one until it's sort of high up in the air, That'll give you more time to take out the other two before the bridge breaks. Fun fact, Reznor is named after Trent Reznor, 
the musician behind Nine Inch Nails. Completing the Vanilla Fortress is the only way to get up to this alternate path through World 4, and since we're here, we might as well complete the Butter Bridge. Butter Bridge 1 is an auto-scrolling level that features a lot of dangerous platforming. This is one of the more difficult levels in the game that's not part of the special world at the end. It helps to have Yoshi and a cape for this one, but if you're really struggling with Butter Bridge 1, you may want to head up to Star World and come back with a blue Yoshi, which will make this one much easier. There are plenty of Koopa Paratroopas for you to eat, and if you have one in the blue Yoshi's mouth, he'll be able to freely fly. If you bounce off all of those green Koopa Paratroopas, you can obtain a 1-up. It's a little bit dangerous, but we're already doing a difficult level, so it might be worth a try. You'll need to ride this piston lift down. That'll make it easier to collect this dragon coin without getting killed. And once you get to the bottom, jump over to the right. There are some items to find in this array of rotating blocks, and there's a power-up in the question mark block at the very bottom, but most of the items that you're going to find here are multi-coin blocks, and other than the one up on the far left side, I would mostly just avoid these and focus on getting to the top as quickly as possible. Over here we'll find the last dragon coin, and then we'll try to navigate these Koopa Paratroopas, which will lead us to the goal line. So make your way down here. There's another one of those green star blocks, so if you've hit enough coins in this level, you'll be able to find a one up there. And then make a jump for the goal line. Try to hit it at the top. We did pretty well getting a 40, but we're always trying to hit that 50. So I do have some good news. Butter Bridge 2 is not auto-scrolling. It is filled with swarms of Super Koopas though, so it's not that much easier than the previous level. It helps to have Yoshi in this level, but if you do take some damage, Yoshi is going to quickly run off the edge of a platform, so it will be very difficult to save him if you get hit. If you get a good running start, you can fly up here to a cloudy platform where you'll find the first dragon coin. From there, we'll drop back down and work our way to the right. If you run fast enough, you can get over those small gaps, but I actually recommend that you don't try to do that because if you're not running quickly enough, you'll just fall off the edge and die. Over here, make sure to press the R button to advance the screen forward so that these enemies that kick shells at you will kick them early. If you can grab a blue shell, you can fly through a lot of that area. And over here, we'll find a feather power-up. If you're trying to collect all the dragon coins, you do need to drop down into this bonus area. If you're riding Yoshi, use the platform on the bottom. But if Mario is alone, you may want to use the rope platform up above. Follow this platform to the end, collect the dragon coin on the wooden planks, and then make your way up the pipe. Drop off the right side of the pipe and wait until you avoid a few enemies before hopping up here, then slowly make your way to the right, turning back to the left when necessary, or jumping through the middle of two flying enemies. That part is tricky. This part is also tricky. Collecting this coin will require you to either dismount Yoshi or hop off of the back of an enemy. Hopping off of the back of an enemy will keep your Yoshi alive, but it's also a lot more difficult to do. And that brings us to the end of the level. And from here, we can go directly to the World 4 castle. But I feel like we're getting ahead of ourselves at this point so let's go back into World 3 and finish that up first. If you take a look over at the checklist, you can see that we did not do the normal exit for Vanilla Dome 2, so let's head back into there now. The key exit that we already found for Vanilla Dome 2 is pretty close to the beginning, so there's a lot of this level that we just haven't seen yet. If you need a fire flower, there's one near the beginning. 
And if you remember from the first time we were here, we're going to abandon our Yoshi so that we can climb up this vine. Sorry, Yoshi. Once you get to the top, we're going to head to the right. We're not going to worry about going down below to get the key this time, but we are trying to collect all of the dragon coins, and one of them is located over near the key, so we will need to go back over there. In this corner, you can find a 1-up. There's also the cape feather down here if you need that. Try to leave a lot of those coins up above so that we can collect them after we hit the P-switch. Here's that fire flower, and this can be a tricky jump. You want to get a little bit of a running start and jump back to the left. Make sure to clear those coins out before you hit the P-switch. And we're going to quickly run down here so that we can collect that dragon coin. And then we're going to fly back up. We will not be needing the key this time. As we make our way back to the right, there's a fire flower in that question mark block if you need it. And over here, we want to avoid this charging Chuck enemy, but he will clear a nice path for us through those rotating blocks. Over here, we'll find a roulette block. You want to release it when it's showing a feather, and then collect it when it's a Starman. Starman is going to make the rest of this level a lot easier. Keep making your way to the right, Starmanning your way through any enemies that you see, and this pipe will take you to a hidden area that's filled with ice. Is there anything good to find down here in this area? Well, no, not really. Just some coins, which aren't particularly exciting. So I would say that this dangerous area is probably more trouble than it's worth. If you'd like to visit it anyway, just make your way to the pipe on the right side, and that will lead you up here to pipe B, which is very close to the goal line. There's another one of those question mark blocks filled with coins here, and you'll want to go underneath this charge and chuck, but get ready, he's going to split into three parts. Use your cape to take them out. And that brings us to the goal line. Vanilla Dome 2 was the last level in this world that had two exits, so we can check that one off of our list and make our way to the Vanilla Ghost House. The Vanilla Ghost House only has a single exit, and although there's a few tricky things in here, this may be the most straightforward ghost house in the entire game. Duck under the first set of eerie enemies, and if you go underneath this wooden platform, you can pick up a dragon coin or a power up on the top side. I recommend staying on the upper level of platforms as you jump across here, because most of those ghost enemies will start lower on the screen. Over here, you'll find a big boo, and you want to get down to the lower tier where you'll be able to find a vine. You want to climb that vine to the top, but if you need a power up, there's one right over here to the right. So you can pick that up and then head back to the left where we'll climb this vine up into the sky. There are a couple enemies up here, but this upper path is a lot safer than the lower one, and you'll find your third dragon coin up here as well. When you drop down to the bottom before you go in the door, you may want to collect the fourth dragon coin, and this question mark block is home to a cache of coins. A couple cape spins will put those coins in Mario's pocket, and then you can head through this door, which will take you to an area with ghostly green bubbles. I recommend using the X button to run through here, and do most of your jumps using the A button to do a spin jump. If your spin jump lands on one of these green bubbles, you'll simply bounce off of it, but if you land on one with your normal jump, well, that will deal you damage. Make sure you collect the coins at the end before you hit the P-switch, so that you'll be able to go through the door that appears. And that brings us to the goal line. There's no hidden goal in this one, so we'll be able to simply move on to Vanilla Dome 3. Vanilla Dome 3 is a very large level, and it's filled with lava. You'll find a Yoshi in here, but not until you get to the second half of the level, so you may want to bring one in from outside. Make sure to hold the R button for a moment as soon as you get in here. That will advance the screen to the right and give you more time to collect this one up out of the air. 
That question mark block near these pipes contains a fire flower, but in this level we'll stay with the cape. By advancing the screen forward using the R button, you'll cause these Blarg enemies to jump early out of the lava, which will make them much easier to avoid. When you get to this lava shelf, you want to jump off to the right, and if you can't jump over that pipe, there is a hidden coin to help you get over. In between them, you'll find a power-up block that contains a feather, and if you get a good running start using a cape here, you can fly up to an area where you'll find a hidden moon. If you fly across to the right from where you found the moon, you can also find the entrance to a bonus room. However, if you're trying to collect all of the dragon coins, you won't be able to get them all if you go in the bonus room, so we're going to skip that and head down here instead. So just ride this skull platform across the lava to the right, jumping out of the way of Blarg enemies if necessary, and you'll find the second dragon coin, right before a bunch of pipes filled with piranha plants. If you want to hang out up on this ledge and just grab all of these coins, don't worry that the skull platform is sliding away to the right. When you come back to the left, you'll find another one. So just touch that skull platform, head over here, and then continue to ride it across the lava, but you'll have to jump off here and you can go down into this pipe. You'll find an icy area inside the pipe, so be careful not to slide into an enemy, but you will find the third dragon coin down here, as well as a question mark box that contains a feather. When you have everything that you need, head back up the pipe. This pipe is labeled letter B, and there's the mid goal. The easiest way to get in there without getting hit by the shell is to do a slam with your cape. Once you've flown up in the air and unfurled your cape, you want to press down and then quickly hold right or left to do that slam move, and then you'll be able to safely get down in here where you can find a Yoshi and hit that checkpoint. Once you have the Yoshi, you'll be able to eat those Blarg enemies, but you still want to use the R button to advance the screen forward so that they jump too early. So just wait back here, Eat the blargs if you want to, but you should be mostly safe from them, and you want to jump up to this platform so that you'll be able to reach this dragon coin. That is the fourth dragon coin, but there are more than five in this level, so we'll be able to get multiple one-ups for these guys. There's some spinies over here which you can eat through the pipes with your Yoshi, and then we'll grab this buzzy beetle and make our way to the right. Here's the fifth dragon coin, but you'll see that is definitely not the last one. If you get a good running start down here, you'll be able to fly up above where you'll find a sixth dragon coin for another one up. And if you head over to the right, you'll find a P-switch that will create a nice little bridge of question mark blocks that will lead you to the goal line. That'll make it a lot easier to hit it at a high point. And that will take us to Vanilla Dome 4. Vanilla Dome 4 is shorter than Vanilla Dome 3, but this one involves a good bit of platforming, and there are bullet bills constantly firing through the air. You probably won't need that mushroom down at the bottom, but you can grab it if you want, and make your way across to the right. So carefully make your way to the right, avoiding the bullet bills, in the first half of the level, you won't see more than two bullets on the screen at a time, but there will be more later. This springboard can help you get up here, and then you can jump across and grab a power-up from this question mark block. Down below that question mark, if you can jump around that block so that Mario goes all the way around it, you'll spawn a 1-up mushroom. Make sure to grab it before it runs away. Continue heading to the right and you'll find the mid-level checkpoint. It's pretty far up in the air, so either hit it as you drift down, or you can dismount from your Yoshi to reach it. You'll find that the bullet bills are being fired from all different directions now, but if you go down into this purple pipe, you'll be able to find a bonus area. Unfortunately, you need to abandon your Yoshi here, 
or you'll run into some problems ahead. You are going to find one of the dragon coins at the end, so if you really need to get all the dragon coins for some reason, you will have to let your Yoshi go. He's just not going to be able to get through that. And that brings us to the end of this cave. Grab that dragon coin and head up the pipe that's labeled B. We didn't skip too far ahead going down into that cave, but if you want to collect a bunch of question mark blocks as well as a 1-up, you can collect all of these, but you may need to pop that 1-up backwards to be able to get it. The last question mark block there is also a coin in case you were curious. And now continue to head to the right, but the bullets are going to start firing again. And just as suddenly as they started, the bullets will stop when you get to this area. Continue to the right, watching out for the Koopa Paratroopas. You can try to use a shell as a weapon if you want, but eventually you'll come to the goal line. And there's only one exit here in Vanilla Dome 4. So from here, all that's left is the castle. Whenever you get inside of Lemmy's castle, you start up on top of this row of rotating blocks and there will be a magic koopa that will try to attack you right away so you want to get rid of him before he can fire his magic so duck down and bop that guy and then don't do a spin jump to go down below you want to head all the way over to the right move back a bit to the left and just keep going until a magic koopa appears below and he will remove one of the blocks so that you can get down to the bottom if you try to do the spin jump there's a very good chance you're going to land in the lava, and that would be instant death. As you make your way to the right, don't miss this P switch. You want to bring it to this spot, drop it, jump on it, and then do a big jump over to the right so that you can go inside this door that will lead you to the mid-level checkpoint and a hidden one up. If you miss out on that door, you'll have to go much farther to the right and you won't be able to hit that mid-level checkpoint. Over here you need to jump across and if you have a cape you can easily remove that dry bones enemy, but you want to wait here until the next part is moving upwards so that you don't get crushed underneath it. Patience is the name of the game here as you jump on these platforms that rise and fall out of the lava. Jump on this one as it's moving upwards and wait here to jump on this one when it reaches a low point. You'll want to quickly get across to this platform and jump over as this one is moving up. If you need that mushroom, you can grab it down in the bottom, but you may want to wait down there for a moment after you pick it up so that you don't get crushed. Head across here as it rises from the lava. Watch out for that Poodaboo that jumps out and take out any dry bones enemies that are in your way using your cape attack. The cape attack will kill them permanently. If you don't have a cape, you'll have to jump on them, but that will only be a temporary solution. The big red door will take us to the boss, and there's a feather outside of it if you need it. Once you get inside, you don't want to stand in the center of any of the pipes. You can get hit as the enemies pop up if you're in the middle, but if you're off to the side, you'll be fine. Two fake lemmies will pop up in addition to the real one. You need to bop the real one three times to win. With Lemmy defeated, we'll be able to make our way to World 4, the Twin Bridges, but we've kind of already been there already. In any case, we'll be able to access some levels that we weren't able to reach before, and this time Mario dismantles the castle with the Donkey Kong hammer. I thought we turned that thing off in the options menu. The message that we get here indicates that the game is only going to get more difficult from here and asks if we've found the red and green switches yet, which we have. We'll save our game and make our way out of Vanilla Dome over to the cheese bridge area. You definitely want a Yoshi for this level, and you're not going to find one inside, so we'll head back to the top secret area where we can get powered up. So once you have a Yoshi, and preferably a cape with an additional feather in your extra item slot, you can head back to the cheese bridge area, 
and we'll get started. There are two reasons why you want a Yoshi here in the Cheese Bridge area. The first is if you get a running start, you can do this. This looks kind of difficult, but I'm actually just holding to the right and holding down the jump button. And magically, it seems like Yoshi's feet just find those buzz saws. The other reason is because you can find a Yoshi's Wings item here, which will take you to this bonus stage. This is a little bit different from the Yoshi's Wing bonus stage that we saw when we did that glitch before. This one has enemies in it. There are also a bunch of dragon coins you can collect here, and collecting the dragon coins here in the bonus stage is the only way to get five in this area, but I'm not going to collect the fifth dragon coin here because I do want to show you where the other ones are throughout the rest of the level. And once you collect five or more dragon coins in a single level, they will not respawn. Well, once you drop off the bottom, you will instantly complete the cheese bridge. So even if you were to get hit by an enemy and fell off the bottom of the screen there, you'd still be able to go on to Cookie Mountain. But the cheese bridge is a level that has two exits. So once you complete it the first time, we need to go back inside. If flying through the beginning of this level seemed a little bit too dangerous for your tastes, you want to activate all three platforms so that you'll be able to jump between them. If you start out down at the bottom, you'll be able to get a dragon coin down there, but then you should head to the top where you'll be able to get a power up and another dragon coin. But remember, if you don't go to the Yoshi's bonus stage, you're not going to get a one up for those dragon coins anyway, so feel free to collect the third one down here at the bottom, but you're only going to find one more. If you did collect all of the dragon coins down here in the lower part of the level and then went up into the bonus stage, you could get quite a few extra lives up there. We're going to head down this purple pipe, and that will take you to this optional area, which I recommend you avoid. There's nothing good to find in here, and there are bullet bills that come flying in at an angle, and they'll try to knock you off your Yoshi. Yoshi can't climb on that rope, but he can bounce from buzzsaw to buzzsaw, so if you can make it this far with Yoshi, this is the way I recommend you get to the end of the level. You don't want to cross the first goal line, instead you want to drift under it with Yoshi, and then dismount as soon as you pass it. If you go under the goal and head to the right, you'll find the second goal line. If you cross that first goal line, that would be the same exit as the Yoshi's wings, and you wouldn't be able to go down here to Soda Lake. Bullet Bill has a cousin named Torpedo Ted, and Soda Lake is filled with them, making this more of a bogus journey than an excellent adventure. The safest way to get through Soda Lake is to stay down at the bottom of the screen, but if you want to collect the dragon coins, you're going to have to put yourself in harm's way. You can go underneath the ground here, so that's certainly the safest way to get through this section. If you want to collect this dragon coin, this one's pretty hard to get without getting touched, but it is possible. Swim up above these blurps and then dip down here to get the third dragon coin, but get out of there quickly so you don't get hit by a torpedo. As soon as this torpedo passes below you, you want to get to the bottom of the screen and stay underneath the land here to get through all of those enemies. You do need to go up and over here and go through the middle. Then if you want to grab this dragon coin, you can, but you'll want to use fireballs to take out the fish in your way. Keep swimming to the right. It's not much farther now. And once again, you can go underneath the ground. Just don't go too far down or you will die. Keep working to the right. And once you get through this pipe, you're in the clear. Just head through the goal line and you've completed the most difficult swimming level in the entire game. Nice work. Completing Soda Lake will connect us up to Star Road. So if you are wondering how to get down here, that's how you do it. 
let's head up to Star Road right now and do Star World number 3. Star World number 3 is possibly the shortest level in the entire game other than maybe the top secret area. And if you'd like to get a yellow Yoshi, we're just going to let Lakitu do most of the work. He'll throw the spinies, they'll walk towards you, the Yoshi will eat them, and eventually he'll grow up into his adult form. The silver P-switch will turn those spiny enemies into coins, and if you want to maximize its potential, you'll want to let Lakitu put a few of those spinies on the screen before you hit it, but it is a bit risky. If you do that though, you'll be able to collect enough silver coins to gain several extra lives, and then considering that we need to finish Star World number 3 twice anyways, we'll just head right through the goal line. Of course this exit doesn't really take us anywhere, so we need to go back inside and get the key exit. And the best way to do that is to hit that silver P switch first so that Lakitu won't be able to hurt you. Then launch one of the blocks up from below so that you can take him off of his cloud. And then steal it and fly the cloud up to the top where you'll find a key and the keyhole. The cloud seems like an item that you can only find in a few levels, but in Yoshi's Island 2, it's possible to do a glitch that will give you a cloud you can use as an item. Pick up a red shell and launch out the fireballs from the top of that first ledge, then run behind the fireball making sure it doesn't go off screen and make sure to eat the green shell so that you can drop it at the top of this ledge. Once the fireball hits it, you're going to press X and A at the same time so that you dismount Yoshi and you need to collect the coin that's produced once it hits Yoshi's tongue but before he swallows it. And then you also need to hold the R button. And you can see in slow motion if you do it correctly Yoshi will eat a charging chuck enemy and you'll get this glitched item in your item box which if you hit select you'll notice is the cloud. Now this magic cloud is special, it never fades away and you'll be able to ride it till the end of the level. So take this cloud as far as you want. If you dismount from it, it will continue to fly along but you can get back onto it. And you can see that although this cloud is difficult to produce, it can be very handy. Getting the cloud takes perfect timing, and if it's not absolutely perfect, you could crash the game, so keep that in mind. Getting the cloud is also more difficult than getting the green orb, and the green orb is generally more useful, but you will find some great places to use the cloud, like this difficult level in the Valley of Bowser. Remember, this cloud will never fade away, it'll stay with you all the way to the end of the level, so you can use it to fly over many dangers. Surprisingly, these tricks can be done on the Switch version of the game, so if you're playing there, you can use the Rewind feature to help make the trick work. This star road leads to the Forest of Illusion, but we haven't connected to that level yet, so we'll head back to the Twin Bridges area. It's time to take on Cookie Mountain. Cookie Mountain is right over here next to the Cheese Bridge. And this is another large area. Cookie Mountain is home to the Sumo Brothers, dangerous enemies related to the Hammer Brothers that will stomp and launch a lightning bolt that will create flames below them. You want to try to hit them from below to take them out, but be careful not to get caught up in the fire. As you head over here to the right, stop and press the R button so that these Koopas will attack you too early. And then you're going to want to grab this red shell so that you can clear out the Monty Mole enemies up here. That shell will easily take them out of your way, and you can follow the path down here to the right. Scroll the screen forward again with the R button so that some of these Monty Moles will spawn before you jump across the pit. And over here there are two Sumo Brothers guarding a Dragon Coin. Try to grab it and then quickly run to the right. You don't want to mess around with those guys. After hitting the mid-level goal, 
make your way down to the right and climb up this vine where you'll find the third dragon coin and then drift down this way. You can find a Yoshi in between two note blocks down here and if you go down this purple pipe, we'll find a watery area that has some coins and a few porcupo enemies that you can eat. Now you may be wondering why we came down here at all, but it's going to lead to an area up above Cookie Mountain where we'll be able to find some 1-ups. If you run across these clouds to the right, you're going to make a 1-up spawn, so make sure to grab it whenever it pops out. And then you can also use these clouds as a runway so that you can do a big jump across to the right where you'll be able to find a yellow block that contains another 1-up. So hit that, collect the 1-up, and then head on to the right, past where we found Yoshi, and over here we'll find the fourth dragon coin. Eating these pink fruits gives Yoshi gas, the kind of gas that will make him release a cloud with a smiley face on it that drops more smiley faces, and those just seem to be coins. We're kind of running out of time here, so while we could sit here and try to collect every coin that that cloud drops, we kind of need to get a move on towards the end of the level. If you get a running start with a cape, you'll be able to fly underneath a row of question mark blocks, and you'll be able to pop all of them. Over here, we'll find the goal line, and once we cross it, it'll be time to move on to this world's castle. Compared to Vanilla Dome or Donut Plains, Twin Bridges is a very small world. We'll head around here to the castle. It looks like it's very hot inside of Ludwig's castle, but it's not actually that difficult. As usual, we'll leave Yoshi behind at the door, the gate will open up, and Mario enters the castle. At the beginning, we're in a very tight hallway, and you'll want to have a cape here so that you can take out some of these undead enemies. Fireballs are not going to do it. There are a lot of mace balls in that area, but it's not that difficult to get through them, and there's a spot in the ceiling that you can jump through, which will lead you to this bonus room. You remember the trick here in this bonus room? You just want to hit the boxes from the left side with your cape feather. And as usual, what were the Koopa engineers thinking putting this many 1-ups inside one of their castles? I just don't know. Maybe they weren't expecting Mario to be able to rig the game using his cape? Maybe? Maybe that's a possibility? But once you exit the bonus room, You'll come to this area where the ceiling is falling down, and you want to wait until just the last moment to hit the on switch, which will make it go back up. Once it hits the top though, it's going to start coming down again, so once you get across the lava, make a mad dash to the left to get to the door. The last leg of Ludwig's castle has some fences for us to climb, and as usual, you can bop the turtles from above to get extra points or possibly lives, or you can punch them from the other side of the fence by pressing Y or X. There is a power-up over to the right if you need it, but for the most part, you want to stay on the left side as you're climbing up here. It's a little bit easier. So just keep climbing up. Jump from fence to fence, and you're going to hold up on the control pad to make sure that you grab on. So you're going to jump over to that fence on the left, grab on by holding up, and we can even get a one up there, not bad. And here's the red door that leads us to the boss, Ludwig Von Koopa. Whenever you stomp on Ludwig's head, he goes into his shell and starts moving around the room, a lot like the bosses in Super Mario Bros. 3. He'll then do this cartwheel jump, and as soon as he lands, that's when you want to hit him again. So watch for where he's going to land, and try to drop right on top of his head. Three stomps will take him out. Now, if you can make it up to Ludwig with a fire flower, there aren't really any in his castle, so you have to bring it from outside. 
You can hit him with two fireballs, and then a single stomp will take him out. So a fire flower will make that fight a bit easier, but Ludwig von Koopa wasn't that difficult to begin with. Mario has rigged up Ludwig's castle with so many explosives that when he hits the detonator, it launches into the air like a rocket, and it explodes with such a force on the nearby hillside that it requires a bandage. Maybe you should stick to plumbing, Mario, and leave the demolitions to the experts. From here, the path leads to the Forest of Illusion, but that brings us to the end of part one. In part two, we'll take on the remaining worlds, including the difficult special levels, and then we'll challenge the Koopa King himself. So make sure to check out the epic conclusion next time on You Can Beat Video Games. Until then, thanks for watching.